You are now in the realm of enlightenment and transformation, as brought to you by the Foundational Friday. Our core aim is to present an experience and opportunity for your soul to reascend to its place of origin by cultivating a healthier spiritual awareness and emotional maturity. This show serves as a free offering to the greater community and an addendum requirement for all a new spiritual training students. For all those listening, if you'd like to move closer to the calculation and fundamental understanding of the new order, be sure to pick up the book, Grasping the Root of Divine Power. If you desire a spiritual reading to help you map your current spiritual position in the face of your world and learn the greatest pathways for your fortune in this season, you can go to the sadulhouse.com. That is S A D U L U H O U S E dot com. You can also go to arisharreligion.com to find out how you can become a student and member of the new spiritual order that O R I S H A R E L I G I O N dot com. Let us begin. Peace, 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 everyone. Peace, family. I am Yuya Hassan Anu, broadcasting to you live on the uh, Foundational Friday segment on our Enlightenment and Transformation channel here on Blog Talk Radio. And uh, on this Friday, we are coming with a different type of vibration, different type of, uh, I'd say, information set. Although, I mean, it's things that we've spoken about before. But after we did a show recently where I offered up some ancestral affirmations and invocations, I got a lot of feedback on that particular segment. And a lot of folks had asked me if I could, you know, give some more uh, type invocations and some more information in that regards in terms of uh, bringing, pulling and uh, working with certain certain energies. So I decided to do that, but not just um, share the information, but to actually uh, go through the process with you on air so you can see what it's actually like and some of the steps that are involved into uh, bringing yourself into a sacred space. And this segment, I really want to focus on the energy of victory, um, protection to a degree. But, you know, we actually we did spiritual protection before, but more importantly, the energy of victory and kind of pushing things back, pushing things away, pushing people and things up off of you and uh, winning out over them. Uh, I've been getting a lot of uh, reading clients lately, phone calls and emails, um, mainly my clients who have been going through these seasons of they, where they've just been challenged and they've just been having a lot of forces come down on them. And I mean, clearly we see that we're in a place where the walls of certain realities are, are crumbling. You know, when you look at the um, the U.S. governmental shutdown now, um, and not that that's not a planned thing, but it clearly shows that the walls of certain folks' reality are slowly crumbling and we're coming into another era. So this creates, of course, its own set of pressure. This creates its own set of tension, its own set of stress. And sometimes that can create warfare or that can create conflict. Uh, and I want everyone to be clear on when I said the government, U.S. government will shut down. In truth, each Egbe or each family, each Ile is a government unto itself, just like each Egbe family, Ile or home is a, is a factory unto itself. Uh, your home should be producing commodity and should be producing certain types of individuals out of them. OK, so. It doesn't really matter much what the U.S. government does. It shouldn't really matter much because you should be a, a government, what we know as uh, home economics. Home economics is actually home government, uh, but they don't really teach that anymore. There's a good reason for it. Okay, so that's one of the things that I want to address as we're dealing with this whole idea of protection 
and we're dealing with this whole energy of victory and overcoming our enemies. One of the first things that we need to be able to do is to identify our enemies, to identify them clearly. And that may be one of the most difficult aspects. Um, and not only identify them, determine what approach we need to take in dealing with them. Now, of course, um, when we're dealing with DeFi, or, you know, or when we're dealing with Orisha studies and Orisha understanding, uh, we come at our enemies um, through divination first. First, we find out what exactly is going on, and then we find out exactly what must be done, what Adamu et Tutu or et Bo must be done in order to, to deal with said enemies, okay? Um, and that's an important aspect, but there's another key to this. Ifa is technology, Okay, Ifa is spiritual technology. Orisha is spiritual formula and technology. And what it's supposed to do is not just empower you spiritually, but it's supposed to empower you mentally. Okay, so that your mental comes into a place where you don't always feel that emergent um, need and that, that urgency to run to your shells or to run to your altar whenever something happens, but you're able to respond with a certain level of intellect. And some of the parasitical elite powers, uh, as you might want to call them, they understand this. So sometimes they'll keep you running around um, doing prayers and evos when they know that they kind of misdirected the target for you. Okay, so you're shooting your aim and you're shooting your, your spiritual energy in the wrong place. Let me give you a very small example before we get into the actual um, invocations and prayers that we're going to do. Um, I get calls all the time, at least three to four times a strong, a seven-day cycle. Some people call that a week, three or four times a week, right? Where people call me with um, situations they're dealing with with the criminal justice system. And sometimes it's their children or their mate or themselves, and they're facing incarceration or fines or, you know, other situations that are coming from a, a brute uh, police state. These type of situations that we find ourselves in now when we're dealing with this entity known as the state. So they come to me and, you know, they need spiritual advice. What do I do? What rituals I do? And one of the first things I'll start asking them about is the um, technical legalities, you know, um, and components of the case that they're dealing with. Uh, that, that helps things so we know where we need to direct our energies to and more often than not people have no idea uh, what their case is dealing with like what 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 are the nature of the charges you know um, and that creates its own problem that level of ignorance where we just again kind of coming from that religious standpoint where you know where we're just going to pray it away we're not going to think you know um, so for example uh, a lot of people who come forward, they come forward with issues with, you know, the state. You know, um, they may have caught a charge or the child or their mate may have caught a charge. And um, maybe the person who or the quote unquote injured party dropped the charges and the state picked it up. Right. And then once the state picks it up, oh, now you're dealing with the Superior Court or you're dealing with Supreme Court. Sometimes a, a, a case will go from municipal to state uh, just that quickly because the state decides to pick it up. But because we don't pick up uh, law books, we don't actually understand that the state is a fictitious entity and, and cannot press charges on anyone because it cannot prove itself to be an injured party. Because in this country, you have the legal right, not privilege. There's a difference. Like when they tell you you have driving privileges, a license gives you driving privileges, and they're playing with your mind. Uh, you actually have the right to drive a passenger vehicle. It's not a privilege. Okay. Um, but in any event, so they press charges against you by the state, but they don't remind you that the Constitution tells you that you have the right to stand before your accuser. And you can now question that accuser, and the ac accuser has to be a biological entity. It has to be able to be identified by weight, by height, by medical history, and by criminal history. So when the state picks up charges, they don't tell you that you can now say, okay, now you must put the state in a chair so that I can question the state as to the nature of the injury that I rendered unto the state. And we've also known through our law books that it's told us that an, an entity without a personality cannot suffer damages. 
So now we need to understand the, the personality of the state. Now, of course, you know, uh, we know none of these things exist, but people still get charged by the state. And then they come to me and they want EBOs done and this and that. And they don't want to hear that, you know, you're actually trying to get me to do an EBO on a fictitious entity that doesn't even exist. It's a corporation. Okay. And it's a quasi authoritative uh Corporation, so it really doesn't have any authority. Uh, what what we live in is, is what you would call a theocracy, and a theocracy, theo, as you know, as I explained many times, means God, and a theocracy is basically um, something that people believe in. So the power that the state has is your belief in it. Now, if you believe in the state, you're already taking Ashe away from your ritual. You see what starts to happen here? Okay, so when I start to explain that to people, then I say, you know what? Let's target individual because you're targeting a ghost. You, you, you're swinging at nothing here. Let's go to the individual. You know, who is the actual individual that is claiming damage or who is trying to damage you and your family? And that needs to be the target of our spiritual work or of our prayers for forgiveness. OK, so that's just a small example of, you know, uh, the level of education that people need to undergo when they start trying to work towards victory. You know, sometimes people come to me, they need help with their jobs. They, you know, I lost my job or I'm trying to find a job. And then one of the things I'll say to them is, okay, are you are you up to date in your field? Are you, are you certified? Do you have the new certification? So for, no, I don't have any of that. Okay, so we're kind of working against ourselves at this point. So uh, to move forward, what I'm speaking about in this show, and I want to precursor before I give you any rituals, uh, I want to precursor it with um, intelligence and social awareness is just as important as your rituals. And this goes for those of you who have uh, godfathers and godmothers that you currently work for. I mean, I'm work with. I'm sorry. Or maybe you might even have um, instructors like me. You may not be in my class, but you may be in someone else's class. One of the challenges, and this is for people, people who want to be awos or want to be babalas or ianifas. One of the challenges that we have as spiritual guides for the community and spiritual counselors is that we have to stay up to date. Okay, we have to kind of know what's going on. Doesn't mean that we have to watch the news and or every night and things like that, because I don't watch the news. I pretty much know what they're talking about anyway. You know, it's a certain, certain format. But we have to be up to date with world events, world technology, um, social innovations, medical innovations, herbs, things, and so forth. So that way, when we're advising our clients, we're giving them relevant information. That's critical. A lot of times people come to me and they share information with me that they receive, maybe from another Baba Lao, another Awo, and it's not relevant to their situation. You know, um, some of these priests and priestesses don't actually step foot into inside of a courtroom to see what actually goes on. Or they don't step foot inside of a hospital to see and to speak to the doctors. If you're working with with a client and a family member the, of theirs is suffering from a sickness, you need to e either get on the phone with that doctor or you need to take a visit to the hospital and see what's happening for yourself so that your spiritual work is more focused. Now, of course, via IFA, uh, we're given direct prescription and things that we can do to assist the client. But those prescriptions we translate and interpret through our own cosmic gateway and as i told you in the book grasping the root of divine power your brain serves as a cosmic gateway to the spiritual world because your brain can lock up lock down the light code so you could receive no information if you're not thinking properly or you're just being ignorant or you're just being stupid you know and remember stupid means knowing something and not doing it so that's not a, necessarily an insult um, but these are all different ways that you can actually lock down, lock down your light code frequency, which will affect the quality of your reading or the quality of your spiritual work. Readings, Ifa, Orisha, wearing Elekes, going to Bimbe's, doing rituals, doing ceremonies, giving ancestral offerings is supposed to make you smarter. It's supposed to cultivate and develop your brain matter as shoot. OK, so the more you do these things, the smarter you should be getting, not relinquishing intelligence to completely dive into spirituality. If that was what you were supposed to do, you wouldn't have incarnated 
on this planet as a human with a flesh brain. Okay, so I hope everyone understands that precursor. Oh, and let me let you know, you know, I'm I'm so used to not doing a live show. If anyone has a question, anything, you could call in at three four seven nine four five seven six eight zero three four seven nine four five seven six eight zero. I know most of the time I don't do my shows live, so people don't even know they can call in, so people don't even attempt to. Most people listen to the archives, and uh, unfortunately, I don't usually give a big announcement before I do a live show. So people don't get their answer, their questions answered right there on the spot. But tonight, you can get your questions answered on the spot. But in any event, um, we're dealing right now, we're in the month of October here. And uh, I figured I would give you some steps for victory, right? Uh, some steps to move forward to victory and some steps to really start to overcome the situations you may be dealing with and to surround yourself with victorious energy. That's what we're really working for. So even if you're not really dealing with a situation right now, you don't really have anything on your back right now, I'm going to give you certain steps to keep things right, to keep you elevated and away from obstacles and blockages. Okay. So October, just so you all know, it's a good note, um, is ruled by the sacred Odu Osha Meji. Osha Meji. That's spelled O S A. And you can put a hyphen, make it easy for yourself. Uh, O S A hyphen M E J I. Osha Meji. And Osha Meji, um, it, and within that, that Odu, we have the attributes and the energy of the astrological sign Gemini. Because within that Odu, we have the attributes of the Ibeje. Okay. Um, October is also a Rumilaz month, okay? Um, but Osha Meji, Osha also deals with Oya, okay? Um, its direct complement would be Ogunda Meji. And I'm sure you can tell by that name, Ogunda Meji, that particular Odu deals with the energy of Ogun. And Osha Meji really deals with um, facing uh, enemies, uh, sometimes it even deals with running from your enemies because when you're dealing, whenever Osha Meji comes up and you're Dilogun, for those of you who are casting Dilogun, you know that uh, Osha is nine uh, shells up. Uh, but when you see that casting and it's a situation and you're dealing with a client, you better let them know right away they're dealing with a very vicious enemy. Okay, so, you know, you, you can't play around with that one. You got to do certain things. Um Interesting enough, a lot of times when I'm doing castings for people, Osha will come up with um, people who want to have extramarital affairs. Okay, that comes up very often. And what's interesting is that we know uh, Oya to be, as they call the guilted, the jilted lover. You know, she's the one who was hurt and um, carries this hurt for the rest of her life. In our Vodun, we have Urzuli Dantor. And Urzuli, Urzuli Dantor, you know, part of her symbol, she has the two knives. Sometimes you see the knife going through the heart, you know, in, in certain forms of her bebe. And that deals with, of course, that hurt heart, that bleeding heart. Um, I've told you many times that this is the energy of who we would call um, Tina Turner. Again, the guilted lover, jilted lover. So um, Osa Meji deals with that. But Osa Meji also deals with not taking things um, so seriously, lightening up a bit. When you understand the Oya energy, the Oyas, you know, they kind of, they're not like Oguns. Remember, the polar complement is Ogun. Oguns are very serious. They're anchored, they're iron, they're heavy. Whereas Oyas are wind, right? They're just blowing from place to place, and wherever it leads me, I'm, I'm out of here. Um, so a lot of times, even with their lovers, they take uh, a similar approach where it's just kind of, you know, <laughs> Going with, with, with the breeze, going with the wind. Um, but again, October is ruled by that sacred Odu of Osa Meji. Okay, so that is an Odu that you can work with this month um, because there are people all around the world currently working with the same Odu. So you get to ride on that energy. That's one of the reasons why we do things. And people ask about, well, what about group rituals? Well, the best thing you need to find out is look at a calendar. That's what the Mayan calendar was all about. The Mayan calendar was not about the end of the world. The Mayan calendar gave us certain dates where certain energies were high, where we could work with them. That's what that was really about. Um, and in traditional senses, um, that's what calendars are always about. Okay, calendars are not for people to keep 
the days. You never need that because you always have women who have dementias. Women do that automatically just by clocking the moon cycles to clock dementias. So you never really need to write down what day it is. It didn't really matter. And it never really matters for a man anyway. What, what do we need to know that for? Uh, it was only strictly for women. They're the ones who created math. You know, uh, even if you look at the word math, it's very similar to the word ma'at. Okay, so mathematics, time, counting, you know, um, this was all calculated and discovered by the feminine energy. Um, interesting enough, calendar is also another word. Remember I got into the, I taught, taught you guys about Oba on, on one of the last shows. And calendar is one of the ancient words for the crone or the wise woman, the calendar. Okay, um, so calendar is actually a, a divine word or divine name. Okay, but anyway, so today, you know, it's Friday, as you know, it's Foundational Friday, and in Europe, we call that Yemoja Loni Ojo Eti, okay, um, I'll say it slow, but you know, you can always go back and listen to the archives and just slow it up anyway, um, but Yemoja Loni Ojo Eti, sometimes when you see uh, Friday written, you'll just see Ojo Eti, but, um, and, and they'll tell you this is Oshun's Day. You know, the day of quarrels. That's what this day is called, the day of quarrels. Because this is a day that you would um, fight any type of um, legal situation. Or really, Friday is the day when you want to make your case heard. Okay, so anytime you have a court situation or, you know, you need to really debate, uh, Friday is a good day to do that. But traditionally, um, not necessarily Oshun's Day, which came from, you know, here being here with being Aphrodite, Venus, and Frida's Day. It was originally uh, Yemoja's Day. Uh, here in the diaspora, we also say that Monday is Yemoja's day because we're dealing with Monday, the moon, Luna. But in actuality, uh, Monday is Ajay. So sometimes the calendar and the days get switched around a little bit, you know, but it's all good. You know, you can still get your work done. Don't sweat. It doesn't mean that everything you've been doing up until this point has been wrong because you've been doing it on a, a day different than what has been traditionally specified. Um, but okay. Let's deal with, we, like I said, this is the month for Orumila. This is the month for Ifa. So let's start with our Ori. Whenever you're doing a prayer or whenever you're doing anything, it should always start with Ori. And I know most people don't do that. They give you a list of Orisha you should go through, and then you go to your Egun. I'm going to give you my order. My order, order is when I'm working, I always start with Ori. Then I go to Olodumare. Then I go to my Egun. Then I go to Eshu and the Orisha. Okay? So my order is Ori, which is my head, my soul, my personal, as they say, Orisha, a personal guardian. Uh, but it is really me as Olodumare. That is really what my Ori is. And then I go to Olodumare. Uh, and then I go to my Egon. And then I go to the Orisha. Okay? So, I mean, if if your Ialocha or your Babalocha has given you an order, you can stick with that. I'm not telling you that their order is wrong or you need to change it. I'm just sharing my order with you, uh, you know, and whatever works for you, you do whatever works for you. I'm just sharing the information. But in any event, we start with Ori. Why do we start with Ori? Because Ori is, is powerful. Ori is more powerful, older, more ancient than Orisha. And Ori is... And signifies and is in alignment with our with our will, and Ori's will, the will of Olodumare. So the will of God is your Ori. Okay, so I start there first by empowering and strengthening me, and plus the Orisha get their charge in a direction via my Ori. So I don't want to start with Orisha and then work my way backwards and then say, oh yeah, by the way, Ori, here's some water. Okay, so I always want to start with my Ori, go there first. So that way I know that I'm not coming from my flesh self. I'm not coming from my human thought. I'm not coming from my human body, but I'm coming from my high self. I'm starting there because any ritual I do, I want to do it for me as God. I don't want to do it for me as man. Okay, I can do that, but it doesn't have the same power, entity, and force and will behind it. I always want to be strengthening and sending power up to my Ori. Uh, very similar a lot of times, especially um, amongst melanated people, you'll see people who are of older ages and they always brag about how good they look and how black don't crack and all the other stuff like that. But and this is a little case study. I'm not saying it's 100% accurate all the time. Just give me something to check out. 
you'll find that sometimes some of those people who brag about their looks the most and how much black don't crack are the most ignorant people you'd ever meet. They are the most spiritually undeveloped, underdeveloped people you would ever want to come in contact with. And my personal theory, you know, take it or leave it, is a lot of times when people are going to church or they're doing prayers or they're doing whatever they're doing, what they're doing is they're taking all that good energy and they're shooting it back down into their physical frame. So what happens now is that their physical frame gets this this imbuement of all this ashe. So they, they're saying, yeah, I'm praying or I'm doing this ritual or I'm having sex. I'm doing all these different things that are raising my kundalini energy. And instead of shooting it out at the top of my crown and sending it out into the universe, or sending it out into my ori, my higher self, my soul, my doppelganger, I'm going to push it right back down from my crown, right back into my, my root chakra. So now my skin is glowing. I got more pep in my step. My hair is luxurious and shiny and full of body and all that, that other good stuff. But my soul is starving because I won't feed it. Okay? So, you know, Ori first. We got to make sure our will is in it and our heart is in it. Okan. Okay, the Okan is in it. That's dealing with the sacred Odu of Okanran. Okay, which you've learned in grasping the root of divine power, because that is actually one of the OB9 castings. Okay. So I deal with, with Ori and then um from Ori I go to Olodumare. Okay? And the reason I go to Olodumare is because I want to acknowledge the string of consciousness that supports that supports all of existence. Okay, if you think about it, um, no, we don't have shrines to Olo Dumare. No, we don't give offerings to Olo Dumare. No, we don't do those things in, in this tradition, right? But we always acknowledge that him or, or it <laughs> being the creative element is what is sustaining and is the underlying consciousness that supports all of existence is Olo Dumare. And I'm saying Oludamari supports all of existence, not necessarily all of non-existence. There's a big difference. Maybe one day when we, we get we get time to go deep into some nerd stuff, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about what that means. But I always tell you that Oludamari is the creator's first desire and attempt to define itself. And it defined itself as Oludamari. But if you're defining something, we have to say, well, what is doing the defining? There's something behind the defining. There's a thought. So Olo Damari, we can call the supreme intelligence, but there is a body. There's an energy field. There's something connected to that intelligence that exists before and behind Olo Damari. But in any event, um, so usually I'll give you a simple prayer that you can do to Olo Damari. I know a lot of the times, um, especially the ones that in my book, you know, sometimes they're a little long. They're hard to memorize. Um, but a real simple one you can do that you can memorize is Mojuba Oluwu De Orun Ileda Oludumare. Okay, these are three aspects of Oludumare I'm giving you. Mojuba Oluwu De Orun Ileda Oludumare. Metalokan Mimo Orisha Bokbo 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 Tajiwa Oga Ogo. Mobe o fi fun inu mi iwa mi mobre. I say, I say, I say. I tried to say it slow for you guys, but again, you know, you can always go back. Um, but it's basically just Mojuba Oluwo Odeorun Ileda Oludumare Metalokun Mimo Orisha Bobo Bobo Tajiwa Oga Ogo Mobe O fi fun inu mi iwa mi mobre. I say, I say, I say. And that basically I'm just saying when I say Monjuba, I'm saying I give honor to or I salute Olu, Wu, Ode Arun, Ileda, and Oludumare, uh, the pure divine Trinity. Trinity that's that's purely divine. Um I'm I'm giving honor to the most high who um who comes in the form of all Orisha. Okay? Because remember the Orisha are forms of Oludumare. So that's why I said Orisha Bobo 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 Tajiwa Oga Ogo. That means uh, the Most High comes in all forms of the, you know, the Orisha. And then I say, I call upon you to put me in your divine character. That's real important. And that could be a painful one too, by the way, <laughs> to be shaped in the character of Oludumari. But Mobeo Fifun Inumi Iwa 
and the EY's character, Mimore, you know, uh, I beseech you, put me into your divine character in Ashe, you know, so it is, or I give power to it, Ashe, Ashe, Ashe. All right. So that is like a, a simple prayer, you know, I would do to Olo Dumare um, for, you know, invocation. And this, again, this is an order of victory. Uh, so this is what I may do to surround myself with a certain type of energy. Okay. And then I would do a simple um, Egun chant or Egun prayer. Now, I know a lot of times I've, I've witnessed some people, it's in my book, you know, how to give Tambiko which I call it in the book, or what some know, many know as libation. Um, and it's a very simple thing to do. But I, I notice sometimes um, when I'm out, uh, people struggle with it a little bit. And maybe, you know, it might be the pressure. You might be a little embarrassed, you know, around people to do it. Maybe you're used to doing it by yourself. Um, so they stumble a little bit. Or maybe they don't know how to pronounce certain things. And that's understandable. You know, sometimes it takes a little while to get caught up to things. Um, so I'm just going to say, a, you know, a quick little libation chant that I do with all my students um, so they know how to start things off. And this is what they do when they pour in their alcohol or pour in their water or just giving a, a verbal libation. Um, but usually you do it with uh, with a liquid, with a libation. OK, so uh, you basically just say Omi Tutu, uh, Omi Tutu, Omi Tutu. Now, this is for your egun you're doing this, by the way. Ona Tutu, Ile Tutu. Tutu babanlas, tutu iyanlas, tutu ori, tutu emi, tutu lareye, kosi iku, kosi wuduru duru, kosi esi, kosi ofo, kosi idina, kosi akoba, kosi pitibo, ariko, ariko baba wo, mojuba oluwo de erun, mojuba ele dumare, mojuba boporisha. Mojuba Eshu, Mojuba Ogun, Mojuba Ochosi, Mojuba Osayin, Mojuba Oluwokbo, Mojuba Obatala, Mojuba Odurua, Mojuba Orumila, Mojuba Ela, Mojuba Ela, Mojuba Ye Moja, Mojuba Oshun, Mojuba Babanas, Mojuba Iyanlas. And then you could go through the list of like, you know, your personal, um, you know, Mojuba, your personal Egun, you know, or, um, you know, your, your national Egun, as we call them which would be just like, you know, uh, the Malcolm X's and, you know, the Elijah Muhammad's, those things that are connected to you. So basically, you know, when you're saying tutu, you're saying I refresh you. So like we said, um, omi tutu three times in the beginning, which means, you know, I give cool water. And more importantly, when I'm saying omi tutu, I'm calling cool water. I'm saying cool water, cool water, cool water. So whatever water or whatever libation I have in my hand, I'm making it omi tutu. I'm making it cool water. You see? Um and coolness also deals with character and calmness and patience. So it it, it literally means cool water, but it, it 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 speaks to the calm patience of water. In order to manifest yourself on the planet as God, you must be calm. Okay, this is very important. To manifest yourself on the planet as God, you must be calm. It's very important. That's why you see with with even in, in in Ghana, you know, like everything is tutu, everything is dealing with water, staying cool. It's very important. Okay, so in the beginning, you know, we say uh, only two, two, three times. We, we're invoking the water, making it cool water, and you know, we're saying we refresh the road, we refresh our house. That's you know, tutu ile. We refresh our ancestors. We refresh um, the Godhead Trinity. We refresh uh, the, the the breath, which is spirit, and me. We refresh La Roye, which is Eshu. That's the the road aspect of Eshu. Um, when we say, you know, then I um, we say Kosi Iku, uh, Kosi Rudu Rudu, Kosi Eshi, Kosi Ofo, Kosi Idina, Kosi Akobo, Kosi Fitobo, Arika Babawo. And what we're saying here is so that death is no more, so that sickness is no more, so that confusion is no more, so that accidents are no more, so that blockages are no more, so that unforeseen harm is no more, so that worries and trouble are no more. Don't let us see death, my father. Okay? Um, so that that was the order. Uh, translation, you can go back and write down or whatever to all the things that I said. And of course, then I said, Mujuba, Uluwa, Mudurum, Mujuba, Eledumari, Mujuba, Poporisha. So what I'm saying, I pay homage to uh, again, Oluwu, De Orun, I pay homage to Elodumare, um, to the Supreme Being, 
uh, pre- when I say Bokpo, Bokpo means all. So Bokpo Orisha, I pay homage to all of the Orisha. And then I went through the, you know, certain individual names, which is an order that I use, Eshu, Ogun, Ochosi, Osayin, Olugobo, Obatala, Odudua, Orumila, Ela, Yemoja, Oshun. Okay, then Baba Inlaz, Iyanlaz, which is our revered um, ancestors and what we would call heaven or what we would call a room. Okay, so, you know, this is the second part of the order. And in doing this now, you know, I've um, now brought in the energy, you see, of my Egun. I brought in the energy of Orisha. And at that point, I would just say, I go, I go, I go, bo, bo, I buy Oruni. Um, and I would say that like three times, which means um, I'm saying attention. I'm calling all of my elders in heaven to attention. Uh, when, when I when I say that phrase, okay, um, and I might also say Agba ba ba rumi mopio 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 bo mi wole mi o wole mi o mo omo repio Agba rumi eti wewe ni ekute ileo ago ki igbo ekun omo reko ma tati wewe, okay, um, and then saying that I'm basically just saying, um, uh. The house rats are very alert. The Ago rat does not ignore the call of their children. So my elders in heaven, I'm calling you. And what that's saying is if a rat can listen to their children, you could listen to what I'm getting ready to say to you. I need you, basically. You see? Um, so that's that's a light translation of that when we're dealing with the, the, the aspect of the rat in Yoruba. Uh, but it goes deeper than that. I, I promised myself that one day I would do a segment on just the animal energies and, and Yoruba. So you would kind of understand too uh, the meaning behind some of these ebbles that you are called to do. But you always want to remember you want to do that invocation next because your egun are our feeling and our healing link to all. Uh, you always want to work with ancestors when another earth being is trying to hinder your progress um, because your ancestors have a closer connection to earth energies than the astral energies do. Um, your ancestors are, are excellent in, in combating a person-to-person situation, okay? Somebody on your job, uh, someone's threatening your household, a neighbor, so forth, so on. You work with your, your egun or your ancestors for that, okay? Um, they're really good when you're dealing with person-to-person situations, all right? And you want to give them, you can give them rum cake. You can give them gin cake. Uh, you can give them cigars. You can give them water. You can even give them coffee. And one of the things that you want to um, invoke them for is to give you insight. Ancestors give you dreams. That's how they typically talk to us, with dreams. So what you want to do with them is when you're going into battle and you begin with dealing with protection and victory, you want to invoke them to reveal to you in your dreams the underlying underlining meaning of your situations in life so you can correct them from the inside out. Okay, so like if somebody is coming at you with battle or for battle, you don't always know why. You could say, oh, they're jealous of me or this, they want my job. But sometimes there's something else going on, you know, and your egun or your ancestors, they can reveal to you the underlining uh, subcontext of what's actually happening. And when that happens, <laughs> you're good. No one can stand against you because you, you can explode whatever's happening from the inside out. And that's when you call upon Eshu. Okay. Now, um, Eshu is very critical because Eshu brings confusion. As you know, Eshu brings order. Um, but any any entity that can do one thing, they can also do the opposite of it. Okay. Keep that in mind. So you want to always make sure you satisfy Eshu uh, in order to allow your expressions to ex- to to proceed from earth to heaven. Um, if your word is your bond, if your word is your bond. Eshu will strengthen your work with, with with an endowment of Ashe if your word is your bond. So whatever you're doing, make sure you have conviction in it. Um, and one of the things that I'll say easily, you know, like quick quick um, prayer to Eshu, it's always good to do this uh, if you have some cigar um, or if you have some rum. And after each line that I say, um, I may give you know, some cigar smoke or I may get some rum. One of the things that I like to do is 
I'll put cigar smoke into my mouth and then I'll say the prayers. So as I'm speaking it, the cigar smoke is coming out. Instead of saying it, then puffing and blowing, saying puffing, you're going to get dizzy like that anyway. You know, um, same thing with rum. A lot of times what I'll do, if you can take the burn of it, put the rum in your mouth, you see, and let it sit in your mouth while you're saying the affirmations. So now the rum itself is charged with the affirmations and then spray that out of your mouth. Okay. So one thing I'll say is eshu mokiyo, eshu mokiyo, eshu mokiyo, eshu apatami, eshu apatami, eshu apatami, eshu. And if I have rum, I say monibo o tirere, which means I have rum outstretched, outstretched in my hand to you. Okay. So eshu mokiyo means eshu, I strengthen you or I bless you. Okay. So you're not just saying eshu, give me something. I got some rum for you. You're saying eshu, you know what? I'm supporting you and I'm supporting your existence and your consciousness here on the planet. So Mokio, I'm giving you something. And then when you say Eshu, my stone, you're saying my burden. Eshu, you are my stone, my burden. Because why? Because what does Eshu live within that root chakra? The root chakra does what? It keeps us grounded to earth. It's a stone. So it's like a burden. I'm still here on the planet. Okay. So that's important. Especially when you go into war, you got to have strong footing. You you engage in any type of martial art, whether it's boxing, kung fu, karate. One of the first things you learn is your stance. If your stance isn't right, you forget it. I don't care how hard you punch. If you can't stand right, you're going to end up on your behind. Okay? So that's what that's really dealing with. And then like a quick prayer is uh, you could use eshu, tiri, ri, lona, atoba, jaye, otili, lugum. Eshu ma se mi, eshu ma se mi, eshu ma se mi. Suban ba mi lo wo bilisi, eshu ma se mi lu iniyan. Ati ma se iniyan lo mi, eshu mo kiyo. Okay, so slowly, eshu tiriri lo na. Ato ba jaye o ti ili lugun. Eshu ma se mi, eshu ma se mi, eshu ma se mi. Suban ba mi lo wo bilisi. Eshu mase milu iniyan. Ati mase iniyan lumi eshu mokiyo ashi. And slowly, that just means, um, like when I say eshu tiri lumna, eshu the powerful one of the road. So that is actually one of the caminos or one of the aspects of eshu, which is um, tiri lumna. Okay, that means the powerful one of the road. And um, when I say atoba jaye otili lugun, it means that Eshu, you are enough to support life. You are sufficient to support life. Um, or you are you are a sufficient support in my life. Okay? You can get the job done is what I'm what I'm reminding Eshu of. Um Eshu Mase me means Eshu don't don't cause trouble. You know, or don't tempt me to do something that I'm not supposed to do. Lead me not into temptation. A lot of you have heard that one before, right? So eshu ma se mi, eshu ma se mi just means eshu don't tempt me, don't don't cause me trouble. Um, and when you say suban ba mi lo wo bilisi, some people may know what lo wo means. That name word may sound familiar. Uh, that means um, uh, don't tempt me, but save me from evil hands. Okay, protect me from my enemies. Uh, when you're saying eshu ma se mi lu inian, you're saying um, don't cause trouble with me against people. Don't tempt me against people. Okay, keep me segregated, right? Um, and don't tempt people against me. That's ati ma se ni alu me. Um, and then you just say eshu mokio. You remember that eshu I support you, eshu I bless you. Okay, so that's the next step that you you can do. Now, because again we're dealing with the month of October, and I told you this is the month of Urumila. Okay, also also Osha Meiji. Um, a really simple ritual you can do to Orumula. And the reason, a lot of people don't work with Orumula. You guys, I know a, a lot of you think that it's only preserved or reserved, I should say, um, for Babalao to work with Orumula. But this is actually not true. Um, you can work with Orumula. Um, you can give offerings to Orumula. You can give water to Orumula. You can give affirmation to Orumula. Um, so I'm going to give you a simple thing that you can do with our... Uh, first Odu in the order, fixed order of Urumila on uh, the Odu Ifa. And that Odu is Eji Obe. Eji Obe. Eji 
E-J-I-O-B O-G-B-E <laughs> as you open it. Alright, and um, it's just, it's it's all light. Okay, so you have four verticals um, on the left side, four vertical lines on the right side, but you want to draw it from right to left, and you're going to draw it, you know, normally we take a pen, like if I wanted to draw an I or a one, I would go from top to bottom, but when you draw the Odu, you're going to go from bottom to top. Okay, um, but what you're going to do is you're going to put some Osun, also known as Camwood, in your left hand. Now, if you have trouble getting yourself some Camwood, you can um, reach out to orishareligion.com and we can assist you with that. But look for the Camwood first. Okay, try to find the Camwood first before you just call and say, hey, man, I'm get me some Camwood. Okay, I'm not as of yet, a botanica. We're working on it now, but we're going to be stocking some products, and I'm partnering with a uh, very large botanica out my way, uh, where I will be distributing some products through orishareligion.com. But as of now, whenever people ask me to find things from, I don't make any money for it. It's just I'm hooking them up. So I appreciate it when people look first before asking. Uh, so get yourself some camwood or what we also call osun. And you're gonna you're gonna put it in your left palm, the, the, the palm of your left hand, and you're gonna mark that odu as you obey in your left hand. Okay. You're gonna also put a large spoonful of honey on that odu and a little bit of water. Okay. And what you're gonna do is, you know, you're just gonna say over it. Um, you're going to say basically a basic, it's, it's a pretty simple and basic um, oriki. And you're going to say, Akbega. You know, matter of fact, I'll give you, the, I, I'll give you guys the Yoruba. You can say the Yoruba. Akbega Oriado, Marivo Gaji Ovun Ope, Apalashara, Niko Mohun, Roro, Soro Odun, Ovumila Ifa, Macheke Omo Ora Aye Mo Inu Kikoro Sotimi Oluni. Ake regbe o yint ki tan mi la dun o ni du ni oruko ti iwo eje obe ni je ni jo ki ni ki o ni o dun fun mi yo. We're going to say that three times. All right. So it's on the recording. So you got it. And you know, the translation is, is pretty pretty simple. Abega tops are do. Palm fronds speak the height of the palm tree. Apalasada never pronounces other speeches. Or Rumila Ifa, let no one say anything ugly of me today. Sweetness never departs an empty honey cake. Sweetness is the name of Edgy Ogbe in olden times. Sweetness is mine. Okay? So you're going to chant that verse three times. All right? Over, over, over your left palm. And then you're going to eat the cam wood and the honey. You're going to eat it. Which is eaten commonly by women. Women eat a lot of cam wood in Nigeria. Um, it's good for women stuff. You can look it up, but um, yeah, it's good. It's good for womb, for the womb. Um, it's also excellent for blood, for, for circulation, uh, any type of blood issues one may have. Also for energy, um, it helps you to digest your food better. It's a whole bunch of stuff came with us. Also, I won't get all into that, but um, you could do that. So now we're working with Ifa. And remember, this is with, we're we're dealing with a war issue, or we're dealing with um, needing to uncover uh, the victory. In our lives, right? So after that, then you can go to Ogun, all right? And you all know who Ogun is. And you notice I'm not calling out, okay, Ogun is this energy and Ifa is this energy, Eshu is energy, because it's all in the archives. If you, if, if any of these energies you don't know that I, that I mentioned, please go into the archives of this show, and you can download the episodes, and you can see, you can learn all about Eshu and Egun and Ori and Yemoja. They're all, they're all right there. For the sake of time, I don't want to um, get into all of them. Um, but you want to work with Ogun to war with those who war with you, okay? And to safeguard your movements. Um, also, Ogun will clear the path to a cooler road in your life. Sometimes when we think of Ogun, we don't think of coolness. But he will clear the path to give you a cooler road and remove the obstacles to that cooler road. Things you can give Ogun is palm oil, cigars, um, and vodka. Okay, these are these are all good um, tools for uh, Ogun. 
And with Ogun, very simple prayer. Again, Ogun Mopio. What does that mean? Ogun, I call you. I told you guys from before. Ogun Mopio, Ogun Mopio, Ogun Mopio. Say it three times. And then you'll say Ogun Monibo. Let's say if it's um, <clears throat> palm oil. Epopopo, Re Re. You know, red palm oil. Or uh, OT, Re Re, strong drink. Um, so Ogun Monibo, OT, Re Re. And then you'll give offer up some of the, the palm oil or some of the vodka. Okay. Um, in a simple prayer, you can just say is Ogun Olo Ida Ogun Olo Ada. Ogun Alada Meji Onife Okan Shako. Onife Okan Zena. Ogun Sina Oje Papo Epo. Oshin Imole Ashe. Okay. Simple, right? You can memorize these. I'm giving you real simple uh, things that, that uh, work, right? So Ogun Olo Ida. Olo Ida, it means sword. So Ogun, the owner of sword. Um, Olo Ada means axe. Ogun, the owner of the axe. And I want you guys to think about what does the sword do? What does the axe do? Because they do serve different purposes. Ogun Alada Meji. Ogun and, and Meji, remember, means twin or two. Like Ibeji, Eji. Okay, so that means Alada is a machete. So Alada Meji means the Ogun who has two machetes. Okay, Onifi Okan Shako means with one knife he clears the farm, and Onifi Okan Zena, and with another knife he clears the road. Uh, then it says Ogun Zena, which is Ogun clears the road. And Oje uh, Papoepo means Ogun eats palm oil. You eat lots of palm oil, which is Je, Je Papoepo. Papoepo is, is palm oil. Okay, um, and then Oshin, Imole, you know, the Imole are the um, inhabitants of heaven. So Oshin is, is another word for chief. So Oshin, Imole means the chief among all of the Imole is Ogun. One day I'll read you guys that story about how Ogun is actually, was actually <laughs> the chief of the Imole, and he gave up his position. They didn't like him as a chief because they said that he smelled like blood. And animal meat all the time because he was hunting all the time and it was unbecoming of a chief for him to have such a rugged appearance. Okay, um, but there's a science to that. And he, they made him chief because he brought iron to the world. They were sitting there trying to use copper to clear fields and whatnot, and they couldn't get it done. So Goon was like, "Look, let me give you some iron." You know, and they was like, "Oh, you got to be our chief then." You know, so he's always helping people out, and then they, they come and they, you know. Defecate all over. <laughs> that's, that's the world of Ogun. But anyway, so then after that, I will deal with Obatala. Now, why will I deal with Obatala? Um, Obatala, you will always call forth to restore purity and calm so that again, you can walk the world as a supreme being. That's why we invoke Obatala most of the time so that we can be the supreme being again because he restores that purity and calm so that's possible. Um, any war, you got to keep in mind that any conflict, war, tension that comes your way could get in the way of your divine purpose. They are distractions. So Obatala ensures us that we're reminded of the creative aspects of our divine purpose. And this within itself brings us victory. Okay? Being focused on that divine purpose and ignoring um, the foolishness, we'll say. Lack of a better word. Um... But it's very important that you invoke Obatala uh, because in the intent that Obatala represents, there's life and is everlasting life. Uh, one of the ways you can um, invoke Obatala is the use of hyssop or sage. You can put either one of those in your bath. Um, hyssop and sage, you can also you can just clean yourself with it. You can uh, burn it as incense. Um, when you're working with Obatala, let me give you a little clue. You want to make sure you're very calm. Right? When you work on a box you're not doing a bunch of dancing and stomp in the yard. Right? You want to be real calm and you want to speak in a very monotone, almost like whisper. You want to speak very calmly. So when you invoke on Obatala, it's just like this. It's not like, Obatala, chief of it. You know, you're not doing that. Okay? Not all that emotion. Keep things very cool. And you want to um, be sober. When you're speaking to Obatala. So sometimes even within our spiritual work, we can be so excited. We kind of get drunk in the moment. Not with Obatala. Even head. 
easy prayer for you is uh Orishanla Obamimo. Mumimo Mimo Resimi Beka. Mi Alabalase. Mobi Oran Alafia Simi. Mobi Oran Iwa Resimi. Mobi Oran Ori Tutu Simi. Obamimo Obatala Alabalase. Bohun Adora Mi. So here I'm just basically saying Orishanla, which is one of Obatala's names. And you know, La means revered or greatest. So by calling Obatala Orishanla, we're saying he's the most revered and greatest Orisha. Because remember, Obatala named all of the other Orisha. Olokun gave us Odu. He gave us the actual symbol for for the Odu. But Obatala named all of the other Orisha. If you didn't know that, now you know. But anyway, we say Obatala or Orishanla Obamimo, which means great Orisha, king of purity. Mumimo Mimo, Resimi, restore your purity within me. Uh, when we say Begba or Begami Alabalase, elevate me, Alabalase. That is one of his names. Mobi um, Oran Alafiasimi, we say I call you or, or I, I beckon. To you to send me well being. You hear the word alafia in there, right? Mobi Oran Iwa Resi Mi. Now, Iwa, you know, is character, right? Beautiful book written by our dear Marlimu Buruti, who will be on Anu Asafo. I don't know if it's this Sunday or next Sunday, but he's on the calendar this month. Got a beautiful book by the name of Iwa. You should pick it up. But you know, Iwa is character. So there I'm saying, I call you to send me character. When I say Mobi Oran Ori Tutu Si Mi, Ori Tutu, right? Tutu is cool, Ori is head. So I'm saying, I call you to send me a cool head. Obamimo, Obatala Ala Balase. And that, really, you don't translate. That, there's no trans. I, I don't know the English to that. Because um, all my prayers I'm translating for you guys. Some things don't translate into English. Just You just got to say it and feel it and know it, you know? Bohun um, which means hear my prayers. You know, um, bohun means listen. And adura, as you know from grasping the word divine power, root of divine power, adura means prayer. So bohun adura me means hear my prayer or prayers. And you can always say that to yourself, even outside of all of this. If you're feeling a little nervous, you know, egun bohun adura me, ancestors hear my prayer, right? And then motupoi, 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 pupo o ashe. I thank you. Motupoi, motupoi, pupo o means I thank you very much. I say so be it. Okay? So that is the full rundown. We did we went through the full live ritual um for victory and protection. All right? And I know usually my voice gets this kind of tone and I look at the switchboards when everybody starts hanging up. <laughs> Cuz you know we've come to the end of our segment. All right? Um I want you to hold on for a couple of seconds. Uh, you, you can give me another minute uh to say goodbye to you all. All right? But uh, in any event, no, it was fun uh, going through that ritual with you. And, you know, go back to the archives again and break it down and um, write it out. And that will now be your ritual for victory and for protection. And while you're at it, chat for protection and victory for me and my family, Ile Anu. All right? It's the least you could do for this, this free broadcast. You know, I'm just joking with you. Kind of. But uh, <laughs> but any event, um, yeah, it's been beautiful, and um, I thank you for spending the time. Yeah, I see my switchboard here is lit up, so we had a lot of people calling and listen, and uh, I know on the, on the live internet side and, and the archives, uh, let this be your ritual. Use it, you know, and get back to us with your feedback on um, how how it worked for you and, and what happened. You know, leave your post on uh, the Sedulu House website. You can comment. Um, on the post that will be for the show, or you can go to Facebook um, and comment on the Sedulu House page. If you are not a member of our learning community, make sure you join. Uh, go to SedulaHouse.com and sign up for classes. It's time for that. This is the month for Rumula, so that is the energy of all knowing, omniscience, knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. Time to get time, time to get on it. But in any event. Um, Got our new Asafo this Sunday at 1 p.m. with Ifa Wumi, Oshundele, and Wole Ifa. Uh, they will be bringing you another exciting show as they always do. And uh, I will be listening in. Maybe I might even call in. 
get to talk to some of you. But um, it's been wonderful, and I thank you for spending this time with me. And until such time, when there is more time, I am Chief Jegna Yuya Asan Anu, signing off. We thank off. you for Hold your listening support and urge you to become an active participating member of the Anu Order. Please be sure to follow our Ustream broadcast, which can be found at ustream.tv forward slash channel forward slash enlightenment hyphen and hyphen transformation. That is U-S-T-R-E-A-M dot TV forward slash channel forward slash E-N-L-I-G-H-T-E-N-M-E-N-T hyphen A-N-D hyphen T-R-A-N-S-F-O-R-M-A-T-I-O-N Also, please be sure to sign up for the A New Newsletter, which can be found by going to anewnation.org. That is A-N-U-N-A-T-I-O-N dot org. If you'd like to become a sponsor or an on-air guest on this or any of our other broadcasts, please be sure to contact us at questions at anewnation.org. That is the word questions at anewnation.org. Thank you for your continued support and be well.